G'day, welcome to this episode of the ADF Architecture TV channel. My name is Chris Muir, I'm an ADF product manager based in Perth, Australia. Now what we're going to talk about on today's episode is not a design or architectural consideration of ADF projects, but rather one of those getting started or planning exercises that team leaders and project managers need to think about for their ADF projects. Specifically, what WebLogic Server and Database Infrastructure or Dev Test and Production Environments do you need to get your project underway? So before we dive into considering the database and WebLogic Server infrastructure that you may need in order to get your um, ADF development up and running, let's just take a step back and talk about some terminology in the enterprise space for development test and production environments. So notice the term there, dev test prod, development test production. This is a pretty typical type of setup that most enterprises have with their infrastructure to support the development of a particular system. So the development area is interested in allowing developers to have a database and WebLogic servers for say their ADF systems to work and play with. The test system is more about the QA teams, the quality assurance teams, and where they're working with the applications deployed to the database and the WebLogic server, where they can do all sorts of testing. Whereas production, of course, is the most important system of all, and that's where our users, maybe the general public or the business users of our organization, are actually using the systems that were originally developed by our development teams. So in an enterprise space, we often talk about this dev test prod model. And in discussion of an ADS system, in terms of environments, we're talking about the dev test and prod databases and WebLogic servers that are required to support our ADF developments. So from an ADF perspective, let's just talk about development environments. Now you will need databases and WebLogic servers for the developers, but arguably in the ADF or J developer space, because developers have an integrated WebLogic server on their J developer ID, they probably don't need an actual WebLogic server, a development one, where they can share code. Well, that's not strictly true because I know from experience that while we can do all the development on our local WebLogic server, it's often useful to or for developers to deploy their applications to a dev WebLogic server so other people can access it and see it before it actually goes to a test server. So in an initial setup of an ADF project, you might not need a dev WebLogic server, but it's useful to put one in place at some stage. Don't leave it forever because it does make it harder for developers and other parts of your organization just to check how the application is running without having to migrate the code to a test system. From a database perspective though, your developers will need a database development server available. And as I said earlier on, it really should be a fairly up-to-date copy of the production system. Think about periodically refreshing the development system from the production system such that it's got real data, Okay, so that the developers are actually developing against um, or writing queries against the database where they will actually see real performance. And in turn, it keeps the code reasonably up to date with production such that if anybody comes into the development database and looks at the code, hopefully it should be a more recent update. Now ideally, developers shouldn't be looking at the development database to see the most recent up to code, recent up to date code. They should be checking your change control systems. But in reality, people bypass these systems. So this is a reason to keep the dev uh, database up to date. In terms of ADF development projects and test environments, um, you will need one or more test environments to test your system. Now, I've been at different sites personally where they've had a multitude of testing environments, some for the QA teams, some for user acceptance testing, some systems for load and stress testing. So, you know, depending on what you're doing and your project life cycles, you may need to duplicate many different test systems. And I can't give you any real guidelines on how many you're going to need. However, I do recommend that you do have at least a load and a stress testing test system, which is a copy of your production system, but not just the data, but the complete setup. Clusters, HTTP servers, LDAP servers, such that you can do real load and stress testing on. Because if you're not load and stress testing on a mirror of your production environment, you don't know actually if your system will hold up under high load. Now I'm realistic, 
the problem with that is you may have to set up numerous extra servers in order to do that setting up extra LDAP servers duplicating lots of code moving environments down from production or copying the production environment moving it down to test this is going to be hard but if you are serious about ensuring that your systems will stay up under load and stress it does make sense to have a proper test systems that mirror the production environments as I mentioned earlier on, also remember about keeping your test systems up to date as copies of your production systems, but obviously as code is pushed through from your development systems that will get then overlaid on top of the test system. And this is what your QA staff and your users, your business users who need to t test that the system is actually doing what it needs to do. This is where they will actually test what, you know, is the, the, the code that developers develop fine. Finally, there is the all-important production system, and this is the most critical system within your business. Now, when you first start out with a greenfield or bespoke ADF development, you don't really need to have a production system. So, a production environment, I should say. So, the databases and the web logic server infrastructure may not ne yet need to exist. But this does need to be a part of your plans, and you when you start ADF, uh, your ADF development, you really should start thinking about putting the test and the production systems in place way before the developers actually get to releasing their code. And that's one of the nice examples in uh, software engineering or project planning where you can actually have parallel tasks occurring. Your ADF developers looking specifically at developing the systems while your administrators, your database administrators, your web logic server administrators and so on and so forth are actually putting the infrastructure in place. So get the dev systems up and running first to get the developers working, but then get the admins to think about the test and production systems. Now there's of course all sorts of best practices to do with production systems in terms of backups and administration and security, really beyond the context of what we're talking about here today. But again, your admin teams should be thinking about this as early as possible. This is all part and critical part of a delivery of a production based system. You know, if it's an ADF system, of course, as important, it would be there too. So we've talked about a dev, a test and production systems, but specifically from the context of ADF, there really are two stripes of systems that we need to have in place. There is our databases, assuming that our ADF application is talking uh, to a database or working on top of a database, and our WebLogic servers, or effectively our Java EE servers, that the ADF application is going to get deployed to. So from a server environment perspective, this means that you'll have your dev, your test, your prod environments, but then multiply that by two for the number of servers you need. And of course, if you have more testing environments, more dev environments, you're multiplying out all your servers or maybe your virtual machines and so on and so forth. So quickly, you start to get an idea of the number of servers that you need to put in place. In addition for particularly your test and reproduction servers, but in addition maybe your dev servers as well, you may need other infrastructure that you need to put in place. So a common example is if the ADF systems, as example, are going to access an LDAP server, you may now also need a server for the LDAP um, and software itself. So that's Oracle's OID or Microsoft's uh, Active Directory. So you've got to think through all these different server environments that you'll need. But specifically from an atypical, uh, I should say atypical ADF application development, you at least need a database and a web logic server per dev, test and prod environments. Now, a nuance of ADF development is when you're developing an ADF application, the ADF application written in a specific version of JDeveloper, let's say the latest version, which is 11.11.170, the ADF runtimes for that application must, well, they must match, okay, and they must be deployed to the WebLogic server. Now, if you're supporting two ADF applications, one written on 11.1.1.7.0 and one written on 11.1.1.6.0, well, then you've got an interesting issue because the ADF runtimes can only be installed, well, by themselves on a WebLogic server. You cannot have two versions of the ADF runtimes on a WebLogic server. So in this context, if you're going to start supporting multiple ADF applications, then you need to think about having multiple WebLogic servers per ADF runtime to provision those applications. Now this, you can quickly see, oh, we've got 10 applications and they're all on different ADF runtime versions. What problem are you going to get into? And this sort of pushes you to thinking about in the future that it's very important to keep all those different applications on the same version. 
so while in history you may get an eleven one one six zero application out into production and then in the future you might have an eleven one one nine zero application that you're working on by the time that guy hits production you really will have wanted to push the eleven one one six zero version up to eleven one nine zero so you don't have to deploy more weblogic servers but in order to do that you're going to have to get your regression testing in place okay so you the big problem with regression testing is too many sites try to do it manually so then you need to think about automated regression testing keep this in mind you can quickly end up in a mess of weblogic server environments and trying to track all the different versions in the different applications you want to keep a really tight ship on all these different versions and weblogic servers some really um, strong advice there so at this point we've talked about our dev, our test and production environments. We've also talked about each one of those environments would be typically from an infrastructure point of view for an ADF application would be split into development and our WebLogic server environments. Now from a database perspective you need to recognize that an ADF application typically, well not all ADF applications work with a database but most do, an ADF application through ADFBC or EGB, EJBs accessing an Oracle database as example, the ADF application is very dependent on the database, not just for connections obviously, but also the table structures and the other structures that are actually in the um, database itself. Now if you're writing a bespoke system and you have database developers who are working on building that system and ADF developers are working on that system, those developers are probably talking to each other. So any changes in the database that impact the ADF application, hey, they're probably talking to each other and um, the ADF developers will be aware of any changes. But at a lot of sites, the database has been around for a long time and there are other systems integrating into the database because the database tends to be one large system that has all sorts of integration points. Now the problem here is from an ADF development perspective is those developers that are building on top of the database may not know about all the changes that are happening to the database, the, 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 the um, uh, development database underneath them. So somebody could be changing the PL SQL packages, somebody could be dropping the tables, uh, or rearranging the columns or renaming the columns, and all of this will have an impact on your ADF developers. Some point those ADF developers are going to have to deal with that, but when developers have got their head down and they're coding to spec, and they're really trying quite hard to get out um, um, a piece of code, you may not want that un uh, the in instability underneath them. So from this perspective, you need to consider for each ADF development team, really should you be giving them a stable database for them, a development database just for them, or one that is shared. And if it is one for them, dedicated to them only, well, then you've got a problem of how do you introduce any changes to that environment and how do you notify the teams? Vice versa, if you do it the other way around, your problem is, well, it's all uncontrolled and the database developers who thought they nearly finished all their code will suddenly find just the one day before they deliver it to test that it's all broken. So you have an interesting challenge here that, well, you need to consider the database and changes to the database, how that impacts the developers, but how the developers and when the developers are actually hit those problems. In addition with the database environment, and like we talked about earlier on with dev, test and prod, the database environment tends to be very unstructured and a free for all, and the DBAs and the WebLogic server administrators won't necessarily have much interest in uh, working with it, though they'll probably be the guys that set it up and uh, at least keep it running. So another consideration that needs to come into play is when does the database, the development database, go down for patching and updating, and who does that work? So really the DBAs um, are the guys who have that skill, but from a developer's perspective, you need to understand that you will impact them when you do this sort of work. So this is again, something from a procedural point of view or a process point of view that you may need to consider in order to help your ADF project and the overall timelines, um, not, uh, you know, you don't go backwards, you don't have any uh, interrupted development time. Putting the database aside, let's now talk about the WebLogic server environments. Now, from a development perspective, it's possibly, as I said earlier on, not necessary to have a development WebLogic server for the uh, developers to work on because they've got the integrated WebLogic server with JDeveloper.
but remember that the integrated web logic server is not a copy of your production system so it's not configured necessarily the same way that your integrated uh, sorry that your production web logic server is such as items such as security and uh, web services as an example so how do you know that when your developers are writing code and locally they're testing that their code is actually going to work once it actually enters a system that is a mirror of production in some form so it does make sense in some and in some manners to allow the developers to work with the integrated web logic server though you might want to introduce wsd scripts to help set that up to help mirror test and production systems but in addition, it does make sense to have development web logic servers where maybe you have web services and other things configured, such as the ADF developers are working with real code that they're sharing and is a real mirror of what's actually going to happen in production and, and I guess test, as opposed to just the free for all that they can have on their integrated web logic servers. Okay, so I hope that's given you a reasonable idea about the concepts of dev, test, and prod servers or environments. In particular, the database and web logic server dev, test, and production environments that you will need to get your ADF projects up and running. Um, you don't need all of them when you start out, but you do need to plan and get them into place. And particularly because of the problems of parallelization of teams, you may need to think about prioritizing the setup of dev databases and web logic servers for your ADF teams before you get your admins to think about your test and prod actual setups. Okay, so there's a bit of parallelization from a project management point, uh, point of view occurring here. Of course, also the dev, test and prod environments that are described here really describe a typical enterprise setup. Now what I haven't described at all here is how you have independent software vendors or ISVs, how they should provision the dev, test and prod environments. Now from my perspective in setting up this little presentation, I don't actually have any experience with ISF, uh, I should say um, ISVs. And I went out there and tried to survey a number of different ISVs who roll out package software based on ADF and other package software, not necessarily on Oracle infrastructure, and how they actually deal with that issue of having clients or customers out there who are using different multiple versions of their software. And basically for the ISVs, it becomes a really complex problem. So basically complex contradiction in terms there, but because they need to start maintaining dev, test and prod environments for all the different versions that they're supporting and a dev, test and prod environment for the development teams who are working on the latest release. So you can kind of see within at least the ISV market, it makes a lot of sense to get cloud infrastructure into place. So you're not having to provision thousands and thousands of servers. It seems like thousands and even software as a service solution, rather than allowing your customers to have to roll out all that infrastructure, it makes sense to get a, a SaaS like solution in place for them, maybe using Oracle's cloud solutions in order to make this all easier. Without a doubt, a challenging situation, but you know this presentation really just wanted to talk about the basics of DES, test and prod for people who aren't familiar with it, uh, for people in the ISV market, good luck. So thanks very much today for listening on the, to this ADF Architecture TV episode. And of course, you can subscribe to this channel with the URL that's on the screen today to keep up to date on the episodes here. So in the future, we'll be talking about other ADF design, architecture, development, deployment type issues, all in order to make your ADF project development successful. Thanks again, and we'll catch you very soon.